As you know, there are Americans uh, who are being evicted from their homes. They can't pay the rent. Many Americans uh, are waiting in food lines for the first time in their lives. Uh, can you look them in the eye, Madam Speaker, and explain why you don't want to accept the President's latest stimulus offer? Well, because uh, — thank you very much. Uh, Wolf, and I, I hope you'll ask the same question of the Republicans about why they don't really want to meet the needs of the American people. But let me say to those people, because all of my colleagues, we represent these people. Uh, I have, for over 30 years, represented my constituents. Uh, I know what their needs are. I listen to them. And their needs are not addressed in the President's proposal. So when you say to me, why don't you accept theirs, why don't they accept ours? Our legislation is there uh, to do three things primarily, to honor our workers, our, honor our heroes, our health care workers, our police and fire first responders, our teachers, our transportation, sanitation, food workers, the people who make our lives work. We couldn't be doing what we're doing without them. Many of them have risked their lives so that they had to save lives, and now they will lose their jobs because but they Mitch really, McConnell they says really, let the states go bankrupt. Excuse me for let interrupting, the states go bankrupt. Ma Madam Speaker, hmm? but they really need the money right now. Uh, and even members of, I of your own— I understand that, but your, if— But even if members you of your me own caucus— question, even members of your own caucus, Madam Speaker, uh, want to accept this deal. $1.8 trillion, Congressman Ro Khanna, d for wait, example. Wait, wait, well, let, wait, me just, wait a let me just quote Ro Khanna, a man you know well. I assume you admire him. He's a Democrat. And he just said this. He said, people in need can't wait until February. $1.8 trillion is significant and more than twice the Obama stimulus. Make a deal. Put the ball in McConnell court. So what do you say to Ro Khanna? What I say to you is, I don't know why you're always an apologist, and many of your colleagues apologize for the Republican position. Rokana, that's nice. That isn't what we're going to do, and nobody's waiting for February. I want this very much now, because people need help now. But it's no use giving them a false thing, just because the president wants to put a, a check with his name on it in the mail that we should not be doing all we can to help people pay the rent, put food on the table, to enhance benefits, that they don't lose their jobs if they're state and local, that they, that this, we're talking about the consequences of a pandemic, that the symptoms of a problem that the president refuses to address. But you know, and that is, Madam and that Speaker, is the coronavirus. We know that is we the know coronavirus. The problem out there, but there are millions of Americans who have lost their jobs. They can't pay the rent. Their kids need the food. That's right, and that's what we're trying 8, to get done. $1.8 trillion, and the president just tweeted, stimulus, go big or go home. He wants even that's more right. right now. So why that's not right. Why not work on that's a deal right. with him and don't let the perfect, as they say here in Washington, be the enemy of the good? Well, I will not let the wrong be the enemy of the right. What's wrong with $1.8 trillion? Wait, I, you know what? Do you have any idea what the difference is between the spending that they have in their bill and that we have in our bill? Do you realize that they have come back and said all these things for child tax credits and earned income tax credits for helping people who have lost their jobs are eliminated in their bill? Do you realize they pay no respect to the fact that child care is very important for people whose children cannot go to school because they're doing remote learning? And yet they minimize the need for child care, which is the, is the th threshold with which people, mothers and fathers, can go to work if they have that. Do you have any idea of how under, that's precisely uh, why, Madam Speaker. Short, their that, concern, that's why it's so, it's so important right now. Yesterday, I spoke to Andrew Yang, who says the same thing. It's not everything you yeah, want, but, you know but what? there's you, a lot okay. there. Honest to God, you really, uh, I can't get over it, because Andrew Yang, he's lovely. Yo Khan, Ro Khan, he's lovely. They are not negotiating this situation. They have no idea of the particulars. They have no idea of what the language is here. I didn't come over here to have you. Oh, so you're the apologist for the Obama, excuse me, God forbid. Madam, Madam Speaker, I'm, I'm not Barack an apologist. Obama. I'm asking you but serious questions because so many people I'm are in desperate to you need we, right now. Let me ask you this. Okay. When was the last time? Let me, you, let me respond to well, you. Let me ask you, you when was the last time, Madam Speaker, when was the last time you spoke with the president about this? 
I don't speak with the president. I speak why with not? his, why his not representative. Call him, why not call him and say, Mr. President, let's work out a deal. It's not going to be everything you want. It's not going to be everything I want. But there are so many Americans right now who are in desperate need. Let's make a deal. What makes me amused, if it weren't so sad, is how you all think that you know more about the suffering of the American people than those of us who are elected by them to represent them at that table. Uh, it is unfortunate that we do not have shared values with this White House and that they have in their bill, why don't you talk about in their bill, a tax break for the wealthiest families in the country while they cut out their earned income tax credit for the poorest families in our country and the poorest children in our country. Uh, that we have to fight with them to get them to address the coronavirus crisis because they have said it was a hoax, it was magical, it's a miracle, it's going to cure it. It hasn't. And that's why we find ourselves in this situation. I feel very confident about the knowledge that I bring to this, but more importantly, the knowledge that my chairs, our chairs of jurisdiction, science-based, academically uh, documented, institutionally uh, suggested in terms of what the cost would be to do it and to do it that way. And about safe, we talk about uh, child care, yes. We talk about safety in the workplace. Safety in the workplace, that's a very important issue, especially in the time of pandemic. So what I say to those people is, we're going to get a deal. And when we do, it will be retroactive. It will be retroactive. Here's, a, here's what you wrote in a letter to House Democrats, Madam Speaker. And I ask these questions only, as you know, so many millions of Americans are suffering right now. Well, you right quote now. two people who know nothing about the agreement. Well, well not, there is no agreement. But what the suggestions are, as if there's some authority on the subject. Please, it, uh, give uh, equal weight to 12, uh, I, to all of the chairmen on the committee who have written this But bill. so many of your fellow Democrats in the House, they want a deal right now. No, they, that they, isn't. The problem solvers... They, they all want a deal right now. Yeah. And, and, and here's what they're complaining about, because you wrote a letter to House Democrats and you said this. Let yeah. me read a line from the letter uh, you wrote. The president only wants his name on a check to go out before Election Day and for the market to go up. Is that what this is all about? Uh, not allow the president to take credit if there's a deal that no, will help millions of Americans that. right now? He's not that important. But let me say this. With all due respect, with all due respect, and you know we've known each other a long time, you really don't know what you're talking about. If the plural of anecdote is not data. Yes, there's some people who said this or that. Overwhelmingly, my caucus wants what is right for the American people. Overwhelmingly, our chairman who wrote the bill, read their statements. They all put out their own statements when they saw what the White House was proposing. So do a service to the issue and have some level of respect for the people who have worked on these issues, written the bill to begin with. Now, let me just say this in terms of the numbers. I want people to do the math. We had 3.4, which would meet the needs of the American people for a sustained period of time so that there was some certainty in what would happen. The Republicans said, no, well, so we took it down a trillion dollars by cutting the time. We took it down another two trillion dollar, two hundred trillion, two hundred, excuse me, two hundred billion dollars. So we're now one point two hundred billion dollars down. We came down to two point two. At the same time, since tomorrow will be five months since we passed the bill, at the same time, the small because there was no resolution, Mitch McConnell said, let's pause. The virus didn't pause, and now we're at a place where we need more money. We need more money for PPP, for our small businesses. We need more money for our airlines. We need more money for our schools. So we have absorbed nearly a half a trillion dollars more of expenses still within the I understand all of that, and I have only the greatest back. respect so for you. So do the math. Madam we have Speaker, come down, I have only the greatest respect for you. Uh, I just want to point out that $1.8 trillion, $1.8 trillion is a, a lot of money. The American people need that money ASAP because they're suffering right now. And I, I'm, I'm not saying it's perfect, but I'm and saying... And you don't care how it's spent. Well, and you don't I, care I care, how of course, spent. how it's spent. But I, I, what I well, don't, don't understand even know is how it's why, spent. Not, why not you talk to the president spent. personally, call him up and say, Mr. President, let's get a deal tomorrow. No. Let me say this. The president has sent Mr. Mnuchin to negotiate. That's what we've done with other presidents. This isn't unusual. What President Bush, 
we had, we did this quite a bit because that's how you negotiate. You, and then you take it to the president. This, Mr. Mnuchin, I think he has integrity representing his position. I, I, may I finish, please? But his, he has integrity representing his position, but his position has no integrity. They do not share our values. Have a little respect for the fact that we know something about these subjects. And there's a big difference between Democrats and Republicans in whether they want to give a big tax cut to the wealthiest people in the country. In their bill, in the CARES Act, we tried to take it out in this bill. Instead, they took out uh, earned income tax credit, child tax credit, expanded health benefits to um, uh, uh, UI benefits to the extent that it was agreed to before. Right. So this is, and I have every confidence in what, uh, and the arguments that we make because it's based on science and uh, documentation. Our chairs know their stuff. They know what they're doing. With all due respect to the kind of people you were referencing, and I welcome their enthusiasm. I welcome their interest. I welcome their originality of their thinking. But the fact is, we have a responsibility to meet the needs of the American people in a retroactive way, so they're not at a total loss. They are at a loss because the president has ignored the virus. I wish you would spend time on the fact that if he had not ignored the virus, we wouldn't be in the position we're in, but we are, and what we are. And let me say about that also, I hope that, uh, I'm pleased that these uh, pharmaceutical companies are taking the responsible position to halt and hopefully then resume. Uh, because we want the public to have confidence in whatever therapies or whatever vaccines come along, that they will take them. And to people who say, well, I don't trust Trump on that, if we trust the uh, uh, Food and Drug Administration for what, for what they are doing, the scientists there who've been working 24-7 for months and months and months, excellent science, the science should call the shot, and when they let's do, uh, we hope, should all and, trust it. And let's hope they get more treatments. Let's hope they get a vaccine. And Madam Speaker, yes. I, I res certainly respect you, but I also respect Ro Khanna. I respect Andrew Yang. I respect members of the Democrats who are members of the problem solvers. They want a deal because so many people right now well, are Well, the problem suffering. solvers, by the way, don't have any earned income tax credit or child tax credit in their proposal either. But let's not well, go into that. Yeah, you evidently do that. not respect the chairman of the committees who I wrote these I respect, bills. I respect all of you. And I wish you would respect the knowledge that goes into getting uh, the, the meeting the needs of the American people. But again, you've been on JAG defending the administration all this time with no knowledge of the difference between our two bills, and I thank you for giving me the opportunity to say that to you in all person. Right. Madam Speaker, these are, these are incredibly difficult times right now, uh, and we'll leave it on that note. Thank you so much yeah. for joining no, we'll us. We'll leave it on the vote that you are not right on this, Wolf, and I hate to say that to all you, right. but I feel confident about it, and I feel confident about my colleagues, and I feel confidence in my chairs. It's not about me. It's about millions of Americans who can't put food on the table, who can't pay the rent, and we represent them. And we represent them. Getting and by we represent these them. long food and lines we represent that we're seeing. Them. I know we you know are. Them. I'm, I'm just we saying. We represent them and we know them. As we, we say. We know them. We represent them. Don't let yes. the perfect be the enemy of the good, as they say. It is here nowhere in near perfect. Madam Speaker. It's always the case, but we're not even close to the good. All right, let's see what happens because every day is critically, critically important.